Welcome to the Fact Checking Podcast, where everything that we say is verifiably 100% true. I am your host, Jake Rivard. How is everybody doing today? I'm all right. Source? So, do you have a source to prove that claim? Source? <laughs> source? Look at my fucking face. I made it the fuck up. That's my source. Uh... <laughs> all right. Anyway. I'm doing fine. Source? <laughs> uh myself <laughs> about about five minutes ago uh we, tom just, we just flipped watched, the fuck out <laughs> we just yeah, watched yeah, tom yeah. go like <laughs> tom went like 1950s house husband on his computer like as if the computer was like a child acting up i his have, wife very rarely have i seen tom espouse such anger and i was only to cap only able to capture a small clip of it what is wrong with you you've taken so many beatings you are a dell you are supposed to be a good computer. Why are you such a piece of shit? I fucking hate I think we should start with the worst. Let's start with the bad take of the week. And there actually, are. it's not from you, which there is I, shocking. But they call me good take, Jake. No, they do not, huh? No, many they people, don't. Many people do. Jake, I call you keep trying. Jay. Did you That's miss the part where I said on. that this is like, you know, fact checking podcast where everything I say is 100 percent true? Because Did you not miss the, if the, the fact? Ch- the fact check is in source myself. Your takes are bad. <laughs> source me wrong. The bad take of the week comes from Greg Wyshynski of Fuck ESPN. I actually don't mind him. He's kind of a snarky guy, but he's like known for being like a like a less funny button pusher than yeah. you know, a lot of others. And for, okay, so for everyone who isn't on Twitter, he tweeted that Mitch Marner is the modern day Sergei Federov. And the reason he said this is because the Leafs are contemplating playing Marner on defense in some situations. Which is hilarious. Which is very funny. I mean, I I guess they do have some things in common. You know, they both held out on contracts. Um, They're both dudes. They're both dudes. and They both play hockey. But I don't think Mitch Marner has ever had sex. Like, I'll keep it real. He looks like like a kid I who's never had sex in his life. He kind of, I guess to me, he looks like the like. He looks rich, like a cutie. He looks like the like, do you know who I am? Do you know who my father is? I know, is, unfortunately, kid? that's my type. Ah, uh, you like the country club boys. I don't. I hate them with a passion, but I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh, he's just a little, he's just a little guy. He's, he's cute. Little... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> he's a month older than me to the day. Anyway, it was really a dumb take. But whatever. Even I mean, DMAC likes my tweet. I was like, what kind of take is this? And DMAC likes it. I was like, <laughs> confirmed. If DMAC Ugh. likes it, then I agree. It's just yeah, crazy. It's like just that's... blasphemous. It's like that the guy from the free press that we talked about who just has outrageously bad takes just so people react. So unfortunately, Greg did have my yeah, reaction. You know, he I'm gonna won. Keep, I'm going to keep it real. I think that a lot of people in hockey media actually have humiliation kinks. And they intentionally say these like really bad takes so that people will like dunk on them because they're like, And unfortunately, I played into it. I am officially a a dominatrix. (laughs) Unintentionally, though. You're like, but you're like unpaid. So unpaid labor. How do you know? There's a power dynamic because he's, you know. How do you uh, know I'm unpaid? Fair. (laughs) Fair, fair. (laughs) Get your bag, Maddie. Get your bag. Thank you. I appreciate your support, Thomas. I was going to say like you know, there's a power dynamic of him being like a big ESPN writer. Like this is this, I, you should demand pay if you haven't been paid. <laughs> Clearly you don't know how a dominatrix works. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I, actually, I, I, only I don't have, either. I only have like vanilla sex. I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> I believe anyway. that. If I, anyway. if I had to, never mind. I'm not going to get it. I, let's I go raised, to the next tape. I was raised Catholic. I get weird. Anyway. Let's like, no, if it's let's, not, never mind. Let's, let's cut out the whole part about me having sex. Um, <laughs> I was going to make a priest joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, no, you can't cut it out because I want to talk about the fact that Jake shared his screen <laughs> before we started recording. This Irish MF was sharing his screen to show us. By the way, he did a great job updating the new website, but he was showing me and shared his screen. And I look at his open tabs. <laughs> I had a video. <laughs> Wait, I no. like to. No, God. it's not. It's not. It's porn. not. It's not porn. Okay. Okay. It's much worse. <laughs> how? Wait. How can it be worse? Is he I got listen- two hours of Celtic music on loop. 
I listen to a lot of music while I write because I can't listen to it with words. And Celtic <laughs> music fits the vibe of the fantasy story I'm writing. You know, a little fiddle, little little violin. Without the context, it's way funnier. Yeah. Fucking but nerd. You just saw it with no context. I saw it with no context. I'm just like, I pictured you sitting there jamming, like, on the loop. I was doing a little Irish jig, ass, a little river Like dance. Brendan Shanahan. Me and Brendan Shanahan go way back, actually. You must know him from the great potato famine. It's like all Irish people know each other. Like how in the 1950s, they would always ask like black people, like, do you know this person from Kansas? The same with Jews. And it's always true. I know every Jew. I don't know every Irish person. There's too many. And there's a lot in Boston. And I don't really want to associate with Boston. Aren't you going to see the Winter Classic there? Yeah, but that doesn't count. (laughs) Exposed. Fake. Speaking of fake, there was a weird little meltdown on Twitter, as usual. So the preseason was rolling around. Like, I guess we'll start with that. We're like um, halfway through the preseason. Yeah. And at this point, a lot of players are vying for roster spots. So they're going to be, especially like younger players or players that have very few career games are going to be playing out of their minds or like playing to the best of their ability because they're trying Just to giving lock. it all. They're all. Yeah. And one of those guys, I want to say his name's Nick Ritchie, laid out Trevor Zegris on like open ice because yep. the dude is trying to cut down the middle in the neutral zone. And there were people that were upset about that. They're like, it's September. We shouldn't be doing that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, no, you absolutely should. That's this what I said, hockey. too. This is what they signed like, what up for. What are you for. waiting for? Like, yeah. if you're not going to, I think they also, not to talk about football, but they something that they talked about in, like, the practice, the open practices with the Lions, too, is, like, this is the best shape you're going to be in until the end of the season. And if you're not giving it your all right now, then you won't have another chance, like, I agree with you, actually. Yeah. Like, that, you know, there's no reason. Also at the game last night, so I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but I was at the the Washington Wings preseason game last night. It was it was getting a little physical, but it was mostly boring. But... Oh, I mean, the Caps play like a pretty physical game, and I really enjoy that. But so did we. Good, as I we mean, should. We'll, we'll get, a, I'll, I'll yeah. talk about that later. Yeah. So actually, you know what, rather than wait later, let's just do it now. Let's start talking game recaps. So there, at the time of this recording, three games have been played. There was one in Pittsburgh, one at home versus Chicago, and then another at home versus Washington. We have each decided to cover one of these games, and we're going to each deliver our own little recap. (laughs) Uh, Why are you laughing? (laughs) Uh, My sleep schedule has been absolutely fucked all week, so I was going to watch last night's game. and That's okay, I was there. Late to the podcast. Fell the late to, to the sleep. recap <laughs> well um, J- jake you know the reason <laughs> yeah i do yeah. okay um, well how are you just gonna say jake you know the reason like that and not okay it's well no no i don't want to know yeah. i don't Russian. <laughs> okay well, that and you guys know that my grandfather passed away this past weekend mm-hmm. yeah i'm sorry so we're sorry to I hear was, that i was down at the funeral and down back home downstate monday and tuesday my sleep schedule has just been all kinds of fucked from grief, anxiety, and then driving eight hours in like a yeah, five days. That's a lot. We yeah. can... I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, anyway. you can cut all that out. Yeah, yeah. So the first game was against Pittsburgh, and it was one of the most hilarious games I've ever seen in my life. Let me set the stage for you. The Red Wings entered Pittsburgh with a group of children. I'm talking young prospects like Elmer Soderblom. You've got your starters. It's kind of hard to be like their children, and then you fucking talk about him. Just, I, I mean, he's a giant. He's a giant child. He's a giant child. Yeah. Um, that anyway. game, they also had what the uh, undrafted free agents. Yeah, so they had a couple the of those guys. Invites. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a the, literally the best players. I think that they iced like are the most NHL players that they iced were Philip Zadina, Michael Rasmussen, and Philip Peronik. So you go in with that, and Pittsburgh came in with. All of their starters, I mean, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Tristan Yari, like all of their big guns are out there. And on paper, you're thinking, okay, like we're fucked. In practice, however, way. an army of small children destroyed Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin in a 6 2 blowout. I thought it was, I, I was at the game. That game counted. Yep, that's that the only counts. game count that counted in preseason so far. It was really fun because the Pittsburgh fan, the Pittsburgh fans were chirping me like crazy. They're like, oh, this is a great game. You know, when the first goal scored. 
then all the goals started to come in for the wings. And I was like, yeah, it is a great game. You're right. This is awesome. If you chirp after you're up one to nothing at the beginning of a game, you are just a fucking idiot. I'm I sorry. Lie. That's a little much. <laughs> after going to a lot of games with Penns fans, I realized that like, and Pittsburgh sports fans in general, lo- love them. I don't want to slander. Why do you city. love them? Le- I know I love Pittsburgh, but I don't love the like. Sports oh, fans. Their fans are really dumb. Yeah. And I'm trying not to like generalize a group, but also like, when you have a guy in the neutral zone and you're screaming, shoot the puck, shoot the puck. Oh my God, puck, that like, drives me nuts. Oh. oh. Or like, I think you're legally allowed to knock them out. Yeah. That's what I, I, went I heard. To, I've been to Steelers games before where they just like, they're screaming. That must like, be worse. They're booing when they're down by a touchdown. And I'm like, dude, you guys are so spoiled. You are the most spoiled team in the NFL. Like, oh, yeah. I hate them. Besides the Patriots, like. You know, you you are not allowed. That era has ended. Yes, long gone. Yeah, rest in piss. <laughs> anyway, um, I have a we have a new segment, and it's called Hero of the Game and Coward of the Game. And so, what we're gonna do is pick out the biggest hero of the game. Oh, who, interesting. And then the biggest coward. In this instance, I think the hero of the game goes to Philip Zadina, who actually had a really great night. He did he? He had a goal. I didn't watch that game. He had a goal and two assists. There was a point where he like oh, stripped wow. the puck from Malkin. I know. I was like, okay, all right, guy. So he did got, not look good last night at if all. Any, if anybody has something to prove, it's him. That and, is true. That is true. Yeah. And so I hope that this is a spark of a greater fire. As far as well, the coward of the game goes, Jeff Petrie. Oh. That, that chicken his baby. Shit, he like, so Bergren stripped the puck from him and tried to score. And while oh, he was yeah, going to the bench, he sucker punched him in the back of the head. <gasps> yeah, I saw and the I, video. It's it's such a fucking cowardly play. Oh, my it, God. Yeah, it, that's like child abuse because, you know, Bergren's like, I don't know, 20. And he's like right. 82. You know, like he's 150-year-old Jeff Petrie's out there. He, I take back kids. what I said about him being baby. And he's adult baby. They, He's just a piece of shit. I the, haven't seen that, though. I think the funniest part of the game was that they were on the power play nine yeah. separate times, and they didn't score once. <laughs> so anyway, that game counted. That's all I'll say about that. Amen, brother. So who watched yeah. the Chicago game? Because I didn't get to watch I that. watched half of it and fell asleep. I finally got over my jet lag last night. Tom, so when I Chicago? fell asleep, they were winning, but I know that we lost four yeah. to two, I think. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you watched them when they were winning, so therefore they won in my books. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, do we want that one like, didn't count? But we should we should make up whatever happened there because I didn't watch any of it. I think I watched um, part of it. We murdered them. Oh, the only thing that I can get to a funny interaction I had. So I was walking Marty right before the game. There was just a guy. There was a group of like middle aged men, and one of them had a hawk's hat on. Like, I was walking him kind of close to the arena. And I was like, get out of here with that hat to the guy. And he goes, oh, sorry. Like, he was, like, genuinely, like, was, I felt that he was sorry about it. And then was I Canadian? Kind of yeah, was was Can- he Canadian? Yeah, was Canadian? Yeah, he was okay. Canadian for sure. Like, there are, I've met a few Canadian Hawks fans, but I just thought that was kind of funny. And I almost felt bad, but then I just remembered he was doing it to himself. Also, this is a great time to bring up I am in possession of a Chicago Blackhawks sweatshirt, and I want one of us to have Burn to wear it. it. Wait, Burn it. wait. Burn it. As a punishment. But Burn it. No, you might have to wear it, Tom. Burn it. What should we, I, let's have a think. Also, if anyone is listening to this and you have a good idea, what sort of competition or like bet can we make on the pod where one of us would have to wear that as a punishment? We should each just have a really outrageous take, like they're making the playoffs. And I don't want to wait till the end of the season, though. Okay. I want it to be at least before Christmas. Before Christmas? Yeah. Before Christmas. All right, listeners, if you have ideas, be sure to reply to our tweets or message us with ideas or email us at 313hockeypod at gmail.com. Yeah, honestly. Does anyone Maddie- ever send us emails? Yes. We've got okay. love you should email. just send it to me because it's probably going to be me that's wearing it. Wow. Oh, Talk about that's... a humiliation king. <laughs> 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 He's like, 
<laughs> just taking it. Listen, if you want to be He's a Blackhawks like, fan, I'm not. I'm no. I do not want to be a Blackhawks fan. Tom might be a bigger Blackhawks hater than me. Not as much as me, though. He had to I, date someone from Chicago. He didn't have to do shit. He made a choice. Yeah, I didn't have to. I did. Make was it worth choice. it? At the time, yes. Okay. That means she was a disagree. freak in the sheets. That's what disagree. that meant. That's what that answer was. Source. Anyway, source. Big fat vagina owner. Okay, that's just <laughs> Jake and I have been, for the record, not me, but we've been going back not and forth. Me, <laughs> not me, everybody else. There's some guy on Twitter who was like, I'm just a nice guy. Uh, what's my to- toxic masculinity? He was, dirt, nice he was going for Jordan Peterson, like toxic masculinity. <laughs> and women are so mean to me. And then some fucking guy, hold on, I got to pull up the tweet again. I couldn't stop reading it. Right, let me um, when it. I tell you, we were like crying laughing at this before you came on. Where is yeah. it? Here. Is he wrote, it- this Jake. is, of course, another lie we've been conditioned to believe by the media thanks to those fat cats and big vagina. <laughs> We're such nice guys and nobody even cares. Shout out to Eric Jeske. I don't even follow him, but this is an epic tweet. Eric underscore J-E-S-K-E. Um, um, really, thank you for that. I have a piece of discourse before we get into the you always have a Cavs game. Discourse. Actually, you know what? Let's let's do the Cavs game. No, and no, we'll I want discourse. it now. I'm thirsty well, but, for your discourse. I mean, a discourse, that course, you know. <laughs> just pick discourse on Mario Our Kart already. <laughs> Rainbow oh. Road is the ultimate equalizer. No, ba- baby the original? Park is. Or, baby no, Park. Ba- yeah, I baby fuck Park. Baby Park. Yeah, Baby I Park. I fucking I hate Baby, baby Park. Baby. That's what I meant is baby that is, Park. That is where the wheat is separated from the chaff. I don't care well, how skilled you are. Either, that is the most parody. What do you okay? What is your take technique for Baby Park? Because I try to do drifting, and usually I'm mm. a really skilled Mario Kart player, but Baby Park fucks me every time. So my strategy, uh, yeah, is I should not play <laughs> to drive faster than everybody else and okay. to make sure that I'm in first place. Okay, and also to avoid all the blue shells because those are bad. I don't gotcha. know if you knew that. That's they're not good. Well, you yeah. have to be in first place to get fucked by a blue shell. So I, I'm not usually. You've never had that experience Baby Park, before. No, I have, but Baby Park usually not. But the thing about Baby Park is, and by the way, was this the discourse you wanted us to talk? Anyway, no, but no. <laughs> the See, thing about undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> the thing about Baby Park is, even if you're not in first place, if like because it's so like narrow, you're probably if you're even in like one to four, gonna get blue shells because you're gonna be near first place, and everything changes like this. And that's why I like it because yeah. it has the most parity. You know, you could See, be. You could be some scrub and you're going to wind up in first place. That's not the parody I fuck with. See, in college, Jake would keep me close enough just to... Why is he... Just to keep me close enough to be the guy that gets fucked by the blue shell or fucked by the red shell so he can get first place. The real skill comes out if you can fuck someone with a green shell. I won't lie to you. I actually had to be banned from playing Mario Kart at Why? our house because yeah. I was too Can you good. play when you come here yes. on my Switch? Okay, cool. I'm only good at the GameCube one, but I will play on the Switch. Of course. There's always an ex- Bring your fucking GameCube then, Jacob. I, I fucking will. <laughs> Bring I it. Mean, I mean, I like, we legitimately had to ban me from playing because I just refused to, I, I was like so good that I would go lap people. All right. And it's Get like humiliating. Yeah. It, it, like, it's it, humiliating. It was pretty bad at one point. I'm so good at Mario Kart. And I'm not trying to like toot my own horn. Okay, well, I look, listen, I look forward to playing you. And if I win, you have to wear the Blackhawks jersey (laughs) or sweatshirt. I'll throw up in my mouth. I'll throw up. Okay, but if you're, if you're so confident and like humiliating your peers. Then you got to wear the sweater. No. (laughs) If you (laughs) wind up. That's not how a bet works. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I make the rules here, Tom. (laughs) Um, okay, been so the, too far. So the discourse. Yes. This is exciting. Elmer Soderblom, big boy, is yeah. playing out of his mind right now. Dude, I know. Wait, let's talk about let's talk about Washington last night. So yes. I I knew he was just gonna be a behemoth. And then I think it was during the second period. So I was like behind net where we shot twice. And he checked the dude and the entire, like the entire section, like multiple sections behind that net just waved. Like the boards were just like 
like flexi glass. Well, they, they technically really are flexi glass, but like it was just the impact of him checking someone into the boards. It was it was beautiful. So it was great to see him on the ice and he looked great. Overall, though, the game was kind of boring and a lot of players were looking really sloppy from both teams. Like overall, who is the sloppiest of toppies? <laughs> um, Zadina looked really sloppy. Hiroshi didn't look great. I'm trying to think who else I was like, really, dude. And those I, two stood out the most, just like getting so easily knocked off the puck. I was so fucking annoyed. There was a dude who said to me, like at a Wings game, that Taro Hiroshi, if he makes the roster, could be a 60 assists guy. And I'm like, absolutely not. I mean, I I'm, listen, I hope, but that's cool not at all was, what I yeah. saw. That's no, not what he, I saw last night. If he was going to make the roster, he would have made it by now. Yeah, uh, that's like, actually, that's true. That's he's, true. He's 27. He's had, I think he's 27. He's had a lot of time to prove his, prove his worth. I mean, he's oh, we, good did, we didn't even, we didn't even talk about Adam Ernie in the, um, the Blackhawks game where he was like good for a second. <laughs> he was good in the Pittsburgh game too. They he was, to him he after was the game okay on, last night. They talked to him after the game for Chicago. But he is, yeah. what did they say? Uh, I can't remember what uh, he said. He was, you know, okay, go ahead. He was with uh, Pius Suter when media was talking to him. Puse. Yeah. Puse. Yeah. Puse. I, I saw a very hilarious meme of Adam Ernie. I have to find mm-hmm. it again. Yes. Okay. Here, let me share my screen really quick. Share it. But uh, also, and I'll, I'll describe it to people who are listening too. Can we talk about fucking Dominic Shine? Dominic Shine. Which one? Oh, so, I, rem- I remember what Ernie was talking all about. All right, hold on. So <laughs> there's an updated oh, God, version. I fucking no, wait, hate Jake, this. There, go 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 to um Justin. I hate this. It go looks so fucking He made a bad. new one. The Adam so, Ernie memes are so good. So I I, I will describe oh, it I to our listeners, it. but holy shit, he tweets it. Yeah, he does. Oh, here it is. Yeah, that logo is shit. So it's it's Adam Ernie's brand logo brand. a picture of th- about three pictures of adam ernie and a bunch of hashtags <laughs> hashtag grit hashtag hockey guy hashtag thoughtful leadership hashtag understated determination i believe all of those quotes are from his like interviews <laughs> we need to have him on the podcast so adam badly. Ernie, if you're listening to this i am on my hands and knees begging you can you take a picture of you on your hands and knees i I I, want him on the podcast just so you and him can squash your beef (laughs) we don't even have beef. wait me or jake (laughs) no jake (laughs) yes you do jake it's a one-sided beef it's a yeah you can't have beef (laughs) if the other person doesn't know you exist (laughs) actually he does know i exist he's favoring my tweets dumping dumping on him no he he knows he exists Okay, wait, anyway, going back to Dominic Shine. So this yes. this guy, I, if you haven't seen it already, so there's a video of him fighting when he's on the Griffins. And just like, he only hits the dude like two or three times and he falls, the, the guy he was beating up. And he just, I don't know, I'm excited. He seemed like a physical presence on the ice last night and he actually looked decent. So I, I am excited about him. And his name is really good for making puns. I saw him play a lot in Grand Rapids and he was just like the energy guy where yeah. they bring him out to just wail on someone. I, he was I like good. it. Yeah, I fucking like it. Also, we should probably talk, and I don't think we put this in the notes, but Bertuzzi's day-to-day right now with his mm-hmm. uh, back injury. Yeah. There's no structure to this podcast. Yeah, that's okay. No. We're, we, we're doing a narrative like uh, stream of consciousness. This is like Ulysses by James <laughs> Joyce, you know? <laughs> we are the modern day infinite jest. <laughs> yes, we anyway. are. That those are maybe too big brain for our audience. Literally of psych ward just patients. hopping all over the fucking place. <laughs> anyway, Elmer Soderblom has been playing very, very well. Like a uh, lot, confirms good at hockey. A lot better than I expected. I, really? I, I assumed he was. I have, assumed like, it would be like this. I, I knew he was going to be good, but I didn't expect him to be like the most likely person to make the lineup. Oh really? really? Who did you expect that to be? Because that's Jump. exactly. I was thinking it was going to be Edvinson or Bergeron. And now that really? I'm watching Edvinson play, I mean, he's playing good, but like. He's fine. I'm I'm leaning a little more towards starting him in Grand Rapids than yeah. I am like starting him in the NHL. Right. And like, it's, it is insane how good he is. Like, I feel like it's looking that way too for Edvinson, just the way that how, who we have on the roster right now, it's looking more that way. 
also I'm going to keep it real. We as a Red Wings community need to get better at nicknames because oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of these <laughs> nicknames I'm hearing are bad. Big Last Elm. year, no, I like Big Elm. I, I like, like that Big Elm. No, I, I do too. Elmer Sodomy. Okay, that's what oh, I mean. This is the exact okay. problem we're talking about. <laughs> okay, can we talk about? Uh, yes. Shout out, shout out to Matt. He is really keen on everybody calling Elmer glue, like Elmer's glue. <laughs> So he, he, I heard him pitch this to our section and then after the game to our entire group several times, but he, he likes to say, you're my boy glue or let's go glue, which I like as a Michigan fan. Cause it sounds like, let's go blue, 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 blue. Yeah. Blue. I just think of blue, like blue. You're my boy from, uh, exactly. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> what he was trying to get across. So, so I like that one. I, there's a guy who I, I do like this guy. He's a Swedish dude and he wants to call him the towering behemoth. And I think that is that's like, lame. that's a good WWE name, but this is WWE. Yeah. yeah. It's just too there's, much. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. I thought that, you were going to say WWP. W, yeah. <laughs> up, there's a guy on last year, Joe Valeno. And somebody tried to call him Joey Poison, which is the That's, lamest. Yeah, because his, no, no, his last name means poison in Italian. Call him Venom. It's right there. But that's Valeno. why. That's why they said that. Venom is a million times better than Joey Poison. Yeah, Joey would... Poison sounds like a, like you're playing it... a mafia game and he's the level one boss. Hey, I'm Joey Poison. No, you should. Yeah. It sounds like you should be taking over uh, fucking Brett from uh, Poison, like the band itself. Mm. Mm. I thought you were gonna say that it sounds like you should be taken out back and shot. No, <laughs> <It's really weird. laughs> like, a, go like no. a horse that doesn't do well in a race. Take him to the Elmer well, factory. Like if you don't, <laughs> we should do that. That's what they do in the KHL. Like if you don't score enough or get enough points, like they just take you out back and shoot you, like we do to the horses that don't compete. I'm sorry, Source. Adam Ernie. Source. <laughs> Source has been to Russia. You're going to the glue factory. I was told as a kid. They must. They I, have have I was thinking, well, I mean, Elmer Soderblom came from a glue factory. But he's Swedish. I heard yeah. some, no. some Dilfy looking guys like go into a suite last night who were speaking Swedish. Like, who are you? <laughs> if you're listening, Dilfy looking Swedish guys, <laughs> email 313 pod. 313 hockey pod. What a time. Does Elmer make yes. the team? Yes. I like it. I think he will. But There's no reason for him not to. Like, you can't argue the other way at this point. He's there, made it so that you can't. There is a way to argue it. Okay, yeah, let's hear it. Just the roster. Where does, yeah, where does he play in the lineup? Because yeah. wow. he's a, I think he's a left wing. Mm -hmm. And right now our left wing lineup is Bertuzzi, Verana, Kubalik, and then I think one of Valeno or um, Ernie or any of those other fill-in guys. But Why I, I, is Ernie even being discussed? Because I don't well, think he's that... he's played in the NHL already, and he has and, a history with Lalone. And well, I was thinking because, like, are you really going to play Elmer fourth-line minutes? Like, I think he's too talented to put him down mm. with, like, yeah. oh, cool, congratulations, you get to play. You made it to the NHL, and you get to right. play with mid and mid. Yeah, that's fair. But, like... Also think about <laughs> Cider's defense pairings that we gave him last year in his rookie season. Like I think about that all the time. He was struggling True. and he still shined. And that's why I also want Dominic Shine because there's so many good jokes we can make. Have you seen no. what Dominic Shine looks like yet? Uh, no. Okay. I would, Let me look I would. him up now. <laughs> how many more? You can see my live react. Hold on. How many more games are left in preseason? I want to say there's very cute. There's I think one three. Yeah, I think there were eight it, total. No, four at home, four seven away. Or eight, yeah, there's okay. one that's going to be happening the day after we record. I'm going to the one on Monday. Okay, and then there's probably two more after that, right? Okay. Anyway, so but, I mean, I'm not good at math. There's still time for those guys to shine and make <laughs> a, make a roster spot, but we'll at see. The very, at the very beginning of the season, most of the time. Yeah, end up seeing those guys starting in Grand Rapids. If they come up within that first month or so, I mean, it mm. definitely means there's something special about them. Yeah, I would like to see Simon Edmondson make the lineup. Yeah. I don't know if he's Who going wouldn't? to yet. We all but... we all want to see that. 
we all want to see it. I don't know. If I he want does. him to be successful, but yeah. yeah, we'll see. One thing though, I heard. So I listened to a little bit of the Lalone interview from the other day, and he so just talking about goalies, which of course is a different situation. But he said he doesn't want to have like Kosa come and just never play and like be on the team, but like not play. So he wants to be able to put at least the goalies in a situation where they're able to play and not sit around and be successful. Yeah. So. And, you know, I think there's a lot to say for that just at every single spot on the roster, because do you want Edmondson to come up and just kind of sit on the bench most of the game where right. if he was in Grand Rapids, he's playing he could play. exactly. majority of the minutes. Right. Yes. That's what you I mean. That's what we want. We want him to at least have that experience and opportunity to to practice and play at that level. Yeah. So I. I don't hate the idea. Like, I would enjoy seeing them come up and play at the beginning of the season, but him and Soderbloom, Bergeron, it more than likely I see them staying in Grand Rapids, at least to start the season. Yeah. But I, I also, like, I, I feel like I constantly oscillate between two takes because I'm like, I'd rather them get a bunch of minutes, but also I don't want them to get over-seasoned in Grand Rapids because Detroit... No, yeah historically has had a problem with over ripening their prospects mm -hmm. where they have them play way too long in the age who do you have in mind like as an example yeah um, ryan sproll evgeny svechnikov I, um, I disagree xavier ulet i feel like if they're good enough that they're going to be called up when the time is right i would hope so yeah i it's i just know they have a reputation of taking their time with it but exactly the point with what the three guys that Jake pointed out, those yeah. guys all bounce back and forth so many times between Grand Rapids and Detroit. So if you get cold in one and it's going to yeah. translate into the other, or just mm -hmm. if, you, the other. if you don't feel like you have a consistent place where you're staying yeah. and you're working, because I mean, look at the same kind of thing when you're working, you want to stay at a one office as much as you can. I'm yeah, personally, I want to stay at home. Yeah. Yeah. But you get my point. You're not traveling back and forth all the time. <laughs> I'm um, totally just fucking with you. We have some exciting news. We now have a second sponsor, along with Detroit Ice Dreams. The team well, technically, we're their sponsor. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> team Trans of the Boston Pride Hockey has decided to enter a little bit of a partnership with us. I'm very excited to make this announcement. They are the first all trans and non-binary hockey team in the history of the That's world. That's fucking sick. Yeah. And they have an event coming up. It is the draft tournament on November 19th and 20th in 2022. It's in the Capital Ice Arena in Middleton, Wisconsin, which is just outside of Madison. There will be six teams, each consisting entirely of transgender players. There's somebody somewhere between 70 and 100 players total so far. There are social events for the players. There's no fee to go in, so it's a free event. If you ever want to make the trip out there, like I said, 19th to 20th of November, there's going to be raffles, shirts, and jerseys for sale. You can also purchase them ahead of time at teamtrans.leagueapps.com slash store. There are also ways you can sponsor registration fees for players. And I don't know, it's going to be a great event. These, they're very cool people. We're going to be having one of the players on eventually within the next couple of weeks. And I know we are planning on getting the president of Detroit Ice Dreams on within the next couple episodes. If you have any cool sponsors that you want us to follow, or you know any organizations that you'd like us to reach out to, feel free to let us know. We'd, we'd love to help the community out as much as we can. Also, we love you. We're so wholesome. We yeah. always tell them we love them. Why are you such a piece of shit? I fucking hate you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We're really looking forward to the next couple weeks as hockey finally starts. There's going to be a lot more coverage on the Twitter page if you follow them at 313hockey. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or funny jokes you want to send us, email us at 313hockeypod at gmail.com. Maddie and I will be at opening night on November, what, 14th? October 14th. October 14th, yeah. October 14th. I will be carrying around pins and stickers for whoever wants them. And I and will be carrying around my fat ass. The big vagina? <laughs> the big vagina. And if anybody comes up to us, and whoever has the best pickup line of the night, 
will win a free Detroit Red Wing or three one three hockey branded wow. hat. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. Nice. So, what does the pickup line have to be for? All of us collectively, be for, one individually. It, I, we, you know what? They can determine that for themselves. But wow, we need to we need to all collectively agree. Like, please pretty text, good pickup line. Please, you gotta make a note. Pickup lines, guys, yeah. so I can also get oh. in on that. We have to make a shared note. Oh, Tom, get an iPhone for fuck's no. sake. No, oh, my my cat has something he'd like to say too. Jimmy? Yes, Hi, to Jimmy. Do you hear him? Do you hear him purring? I heard no. him just say a slur. Yeah. He's yeah. really good at that. Yeah. I, I didn't him. know Jimmy hates I, Jews. I told him you were Jewish and he got really upset. I, I that's a normal reaction. Anyway. Anyway, we love you. Go wings. We'll be LGRW. I'll be um, at the game on Monday. So come say hi to Maddie if you see her at the game on Monday. Only and if I look cute. If I don't if look cute, cute, do ignore not her. approach me. She will. She's like a pit bull. She'll bite you and lock down her jaw. <laughs> All right. Anyway, bye everyone. <laughs>